guys, Bullhorn Betty here, giving you breaking daily updates related to the Sebastian Rogers case. This is going to blow your mind, guys. I've been personally covering the case of Sebastian Rogers, a 15-year-old autistic boy that disappeared from Hendersonville, Tennessee. His mother, Katie Proudfoot, and stepfather, Chris Proudfoot, came out and told their stories in this interview about what transpired related to the disappearance of their 15-year-old son. Katie, Sebastian's mother, describes the day before he disappeared, Sunday, February 25th. They went to BJ's, he got a colossal popcorn, he was just a very happy, jovial uh, young man, and they came home, put some snacks away, and then they went to a local bowling alley, and next to the bowling alley was a steakhouse where they ate. After they ate, they loaded up and went home. He took out the garbage and the rest is history. He goes to bed at 9 p.m. Mom goes to bed at midnight. She awakes at 6 a.m. to wake Sebastian up as she normally does and he's gone. Christopher Proudfoot states that he was not even in the area at the time that Sebastian left the home, that he was many miles away as he was working in Memphis and staying in his camper in Mississippi. A lot of people watching this case unfold became very, very skeptical of both Katie and Christopher Proudfoot's story about what happened leading up to Sebastian's disappearance. Many people noticed the deep abrasion scratches in some areas looking like bite marks on Christopher Proudfoot's arms some eight days after Sebastian disappeared. Seth Rogers, which is Sebastian's biological father, decided to start doing some ground searches and raised money on a GoFundMe page to aid those efforts. Christopher Proudfoot threatened Sebastian's father in a lawsuit related to the GoFundMe page and also the fact that Seth appeared to make the family, the other side of the family, look bad. Many people went out searching for Sebastian Rogers and the one thing that was missing out of all the efforts volunteers put forth was Christopher and Katie Proudfoot. And when people asked them why they weren't out searching for their very son that went missing from their home, they told people that it was because law enforcement told them to stay home. However, that very evening, they were seen at a barbecue joint outside of the home enjoying a dinner. Meanwhile, never once searching for their very son that they say they care about and want to come home. Media was in an uproar, demanding answers from both Katie and Christopher Proudfoot why they're not helping with any searches for their son. And what was their response? They got in their camper, packed it up, and took off. Sebastian's mom and stepfather took off to a campground in Mississippi where they returned home for a short while and then returned back to this campground. Right now, it appears that the camper is still at this mobile home park or RV park with Chris's truck, but we have confirmed Chris is not staying there and has installed a camera on the camper. There are so many people curious as to why there's a camera on this camper but not on their home before Sebastian Rogers walked out that door. The sheriff was very cordial at the beginning of this search for Sebastian when he truly believed both Katie and Chris Proudfoot were deemed innocent and had no culpability in the disappearance of their son. If you look at the newest interview Nick Barris has with this very sheriff, you see a much different demeanor. Does this case anger me? You darn right, does it make me wanna almost lose my mind? You darn tootin'. Chris and Katie have a lot of explaining to do because what I just laid out for you is only a minor, small amount of the case against them.